Hello and welcome to another JavaScript tutorial. In this tutorial we will be learning about the do while loop. Do while loop is different from while loop in one perspective that do while loop is considered to be a post condition loop. That means instead of a condition being checked at the beginning of the body of the loop, the condition gets checked at the end of the body of the loop. So even if the condition is false, the loop gets to execute once. However, in some situations, post condition loops are extremely useful when you had to take some kind of an input before you could process it. And the input that you're taking in is being checked in the validation. If you would do it with a precondition loop, you might have to take an input before, that means outside of the loop, and then if that doesn't meet the criteria, then check it again in the inside of the loop and keep processing until the loop meets the condition or the input is the desired input. So avoid having to accept the value for the same variable twice, it's a good idea to use a post condition loop and only use the input once inside the loop. <clears throat> now we'll be looking into the do while loop. It's a post condition loop. It's a finite loop. It's count control or event control, just like while loop has a starting point, has an end point, and has a process. So here we have the while loop that we created in the previous example. In fact, we have two of them. So now we were going to transform this into a do while loop and you were going to notice the output will be exactly the same. All you need to do is move the loop condition towards the bottom and put a semicolon at the end. Start the loop with the word do. This is do while loop. Since the condition is towards the end, therefore the condition gets checked before the loop goes back into the next process. Now we will going to try to do the same with this one. We'll drag the condition down here, put a semicolon, and then we'll put the word do in here, okay? So this is forward order, that's a reverse order. Now let's have an analysis or the walkthrough of this code. The value of the variable number is equals to one. Then the loop starts. It prints out one increments the value of the num by one, so now the new value is two. Checks, is two less than or equals to 10? Yes. Goes back into the loop, prints two. Then increments it to three. Checks back and see, is three less than equals to 10? Yes, goes back into the loop. Like that, it reaches all the way through 10. So prints out 10, and then makes it 11. Is 11 less than or equals to 10? No, so the loop terminates. A new line is thrown out onto the screen, and now it moves on to the next loop. The next loop says, start the variable counter num equals to 10. Prints out 10. Decreases the value of num by one, so it now becomes nine. Is nine greater than or equals to one? Yes. Goes back, prints nine, changes it to eight, is 8 greater than or equals to 1? Yes, goes back. Like that comes all the way down to 1. Is 1 greater than or equals to 1? Yes, it is not greater than, but it's equals to. So it goes back into the loop, prints out 1, and now num becomes 0. Is 0 greater or equals to 1? No, so the loop stops and terminate. So the output of the two loops will be exactly the same. Now, as the while loops <clears throat> that we looked at in our previous examples. So it will be exactly the same output. The first loop prints in the forward order. The second loop prints out in the reverse order. That's all for now from this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to explore for loop. And then the tutorial after that will explore the nested loops. Thank you for watching.